Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. On my heart and bring your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. obvious that Christmas is near. When the trees, wreaths, and garland are out of the major scene, it's out in front of the church. Some holidays and special occasions, however, are easily overlooked. They come upon you like a thief. There isn't much that leads up to them, and they can kind of sneak up on you if you aren't paying attention. I see some wives looking at husbands. <laughs> Birthdays and anniversaries can certainly come upon us without warning. Actually, today's my little brother's birthday, and I probably wouldn't have remembered if it weren't for my parents calling me yesterday to rub it in that they were going out to a nice dinner last night to celebrate his birthday. <laughs> As for Christmas, however, it's pretty difficult to miss. Radio stations play Christmas music, and people start decorating even before Thanksgiving. People prepare earlier and earlier for Christmas. They're ready for it to come. Just as there are signs that alert us to the coming of Christmas, so also Christ tells us that there are signs to alert us of his final coming. There will be signs and sun and moon and stars, and on the earth, distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up. Raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out and leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Christ is coming. <coughs> He has promised to return, and we can see the signs that alert us that He is near. All around us, we see distress of nations in perplexity. There's a constant state of distress, or at least the news seems to portray that there is. The world is in turmoil, disease is running rampant, and it seems as if medicine isn't able to keep up. It seems, at least, it's, it's inevitable that everyone will get cancer of some kind or another eventually. Fires and floods are becoming more and more normal. Our country is becoming more and more divided, and other countries can't seem to get along. There's still insane dictators with nuclear weapons that could destroy everything with the push of a button, it seems. No one knows or distinguishes between right and wrong, men marry men, women marry women, and the ability to kill a baby is thought to be a right. Surely the fig tree is coming out and we Surely Christ is coming soon. Surely Christ is coming with power and great glory. He isn't coming as he did in Bethlehem, as an adorable, helpless little baby in a manger. He isn't coming as he did in Jerusalem, humble and lowly mounted on a donkey. He is coming in a cloud with power and great glory. For as our Old Testament lesson puts it, the day is coming burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evil doers will be stubble. The day shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. He isn't coming in a cute and cuddly way, but rather he is coming as the Son of Man with judgment and destruction, 
those who are without faith. Well, this is a terror to some. It's a comfort to us who are in Christ, who fear his name and await his coming. As Malachi says, but for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act as the Lord of hosts. We have faith and confidence to know that the coming of the Son of Man brings healing. We know that the coming of Christ will put an end to all of the distress, the distresses of nations and complexity that is prevalent in this world. Christ will also put an end to our divisions, wars, diseases, and disasters. He will finally destroy all sin once and for all, that we may live with him forever. As we see all the signs of his coming, as we face all of the stress, turmoil, and sin of this world, we look forward to the coming of Christ and we busy ourselves with, with prayer and the study of God's word. As we continue to suffer the signs, we continue to prepare and be ready for the coming of Christ, lest we be caught unaware. Rather than lamenting and acting as if all hope is lost and the sky is falling, because of all the terrible things going on in this world and around us, we continue to stand firm in prayer. We continue to find comfort in the promise of Christ, that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. We have the comfort that no matter how bad things are, and they will get worse, that Christ will continue to guard and keep us in the true faith. As we continue to remain awake, and we continue to pray, Christ continues to hear and answer our prayers. He continues to assure us that He is coming soon, and He will deliver us from all this tribulation. Until he comes to deliver us out of this tribulation, we take comfort that we get momentary relief from the tribulations of this life when we are here in the Lord's house hearing his word. Here where the gospel is proclaimed and the sacraments are administered is where the kingdom of God is present on earth. Here is where Christ comes in his body and blood each and every Sunday. Here is where the gospel is proclaimed and our sins are forgiven so that we can be confident to stand before the Son of God on the last day. Here is where we are constantly awoken from the slumber of this life to look forward to the life to come. As we continue to endure the distress of nations and perplexity, we look forward to the coming of the Son of Man. We take part in the tribulations and distresses of this world are only temporary, and the word of the Lord endures forever. Take comfort that the trees are coming out and leave, and soon the Son of Man will return in glory to claim us as his own forever. In the name of Jesus.